Welcome to Friends Seminary's open house for our upper school, coming to you live from our new Zoom campus. The music you've been listening to is five variations on a theme, the theme being our school's alma mater. It was composed and performed by our staff pianist, Tab Dindy. My name is Bo Lauder, and I am in my 19th year leading this amazing, venerable 235-year-old institution. Tonight, our purpose is to introduce you to friends and initiate what we hope will be an ongoing conversation about your high school education. First, I would like to acknowledge that those in the audience who are applying to high school are doing so at a moment unlike anything our city and country have seen before. You are being asked, actually forced by circumstance, to discern and make one of the most important decisions you'll ever make under the weight of the COVID pandemic and a tremendous rise in violence against people of color, especially black people. And you are probably as anxious as I am about the election because win, lose or draw, our next president must lead us into a brighter world and you will likely play a role in this. To those of you who are parents of these wonderful young people, you are probably experiencing your own challenges, perhaps working with your children all day as they take classes on Zoom. You may work in a sector that has been particularly hard hit by the downturn in the economy. Friends is a school that has weathered much in our almost two and a half centuries. The Civil War, the great pandemic of 1918, two world wars and the cultural revolutions and wars of the 1950s and 1960s. Why am I dwelling on all of this? I do so for several reasons, but here are two. Ours is a mature school, strongly rooted in the Quaker values upon which it was built. For instance, gender equity was present when the school was founded. Our Quaker founders believe that girls should have educations equal to those of boys. Thus, our school has been coeducational since 1786. As a school with so much history, you might think we are a little old fashioned. Yes, I suppose in some ways we are. We still teach Latin starting in seventh grade and we go through the AP level. Yes, our library still has books including an early printing of the OED. We still hold the doors for each other, regardless of age and gender. But don't be fooled, Friends Seminary is never still. For instance, we've just completed and got to enjoy for only a half a year, a new upper school building with tricked out classrooms, a student center, an outdoor terrace, the width of the building, with a garden room and fountain reserved for quiet contemplation. We also are the first and I think still the only private school in Manhattan that teaches Arabic language and culture. We created a new academic department in recent years where the school's service program, DEI initiatives and global studies and peace programs all come together in harmony. So to be 235 years old, we're pretty forward looking and nimble, and I think we look pretty good too. The second reason for addressing the state of our world is to assure you that Friends puts its people first. When the pandemic first hit, the school established a fund called Friends as Family to assist those in our community who were disproportionately hit when the, when the pandemic occurred. We've helped to pay for tuition, to help with rent and to buy groceries. I'm so proud that this school put its people before itself in taking, in taking steps to protect its community members before it even had time to assess what damage it may have suffered itself. I believe this approach to education, school as community is why we have endured for so long. So the good news piece, you students are so lucky to be entering high school in New York City. There are over 80 independent schools in the city, and we each have our own culture and distinctive style and way of teaching. You're in for an interesting journey. 
We don't have uniforms, some schools do. We call each other by our first names, a Quaker tradition that signals equality. Other schools use more formal titles. In some schools, the teacher is the sage on the stage. At Friends, we believe you are the sages and you will be asked to actively to participate in your classes. We believe that our mission is to educate scholars who will take their talents out into the world to make it a better place. And we say so in our mission statement. Just as an aside, you will learn a lot from schools mission statements and the degree of their specificity. A mission statement represents a promise it makes to parents and students about the kind of experiences you can expect and what a school's priorities really are. I suggest that you examine each school you're looking at their mission statement to make sure that that coincides with what you are looking for. Here is Friends Seminary's mission statement. In my 19 years, we have only changed two words. 20 years ago, when I was applying for this job, it is this document, almost a prose poem in its beauty and aspiration, that told me this was the school for me. As you see, the last sentence echoes what I said earlier about our school and our approach, that we are training students to help bring about a world that ought to be. Again, I am grateful that you have joined us tonight. I look forward to seeing you as this process continues. And now it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Harriet Burnett, Director of Admissions and Enrollment, who beats me in service to the school by just a little over a decade. Harriet. Thanks, Bo, and good evening. High school is a milestone moment. As you think about this next big step, probably the three most important questions going through your minds right now are, will I be happy? Will I fit in? Can I do the work? As we share the Friends experience with you tonight, we hope that we can help you answer these questions. One of the questions I'm most often asked is, so what's it like to be a student at a Quaker school? As Bo explained, our values of simplicity, peace, integrity, equality, equity, and stewardship resonate in every aspect of life at our, at our school. Overarching these values is a firm belief that the most meaningful context which to both learn and to teach is one that's rooted in the real world. And to this end, we're trying to build a school community that reflects the city at large in as many ways as possible because that's what opens minds, that's what enriches our program, and that's what Friends is all about. So when you take these values and combine it, them with an awesomely rich and robust academic program, you create a learning environment that just feels so liberating for students because they feel so safe to be their best selves at this school. They feel supported to go broadly and deeply without fear of judgment or criticism. They learn resiliency and have a rich toolbox to push reset if they need to find other ways to get from here to there. For sure, our students will be challenged. The bar is held high to inspire, encourage, and engage, not to overwhelm or crush, a key point. And for sure, they will, be, they will feel supported, not just every step of the way, but in those nuanced in between steps, which count the most. And when you put these pieces, two pieces together, the challenge and support, you get a school that is just full of optimism, which has always been my descriptor for the gestalt, the spirit of friends. The philosophy is overwhelmingly optimistic about the world at large, and it's so much so about children. And although we can't be on our exquisitely reimagined campus at the moment to experience this optimism firsthand, we hope you will leave this evening with a sense of what it means to be a student at Friends Seminary. And now to our program. In the next segment, we ask you, cho we ask you to choose one of three concurrent sessions which illuminate the Friends experience. Links for each session will be posted in the chat. Session one, Beyond the Content, the Student-Teacher Relationship will be hosted by Hassan Wilson, the Assistant Head of Upper School. This session will discuss this student experience in the context of support, taking care, and a belief in the possibilities of each and every student. 
session two, Beyond the Classroom Student Life, will be hosted by Erin Mumford, <clears throat> Dean of Student Life. This session focuses on life beyond the classroom, which includes the arts, athletics, and extracurricular programming. Probably the hardest part about being a friend student is choosing from the multitude of opportunities available to our students. They want to do it all. Our third session, Quaker Values in Action, our Center for Peace, Equity, and Justice, known as CPEG, will be hosted by Liesl Shane, Director of Co-Curricular Programs, Jason Craig Harris, Director of Diversity and, and Inclusion, and Kimby Heil, Director of Service Learning and Civic Engagement. CPEG is our think tank for service learning, diversity and, and inclusion, global education, and environmental sustainability programs, which are embedded both inside and outside the classroom. Although you're choosing only one session tonight, all sessions will be recorded and a link will be sent to everyone who has joined us this evening. Once the concurrent sessions have ended, we will return to the main room to hear from the head of upper school, Kate Reynolds, and a panel of students and faculty who will be happy to answer your questions. To note, there will be a five minute transition between leaving the main room and entering your chosen session and another five minute transition after leaving your session and gathering again in the main room. Once again, all links, all links are posted in the chat. Thank you and enjoy the evening. <laughs>